the 12 days of OpenAI is finished. And on the final day of the promotion, we got O3 Preview. This is going to be the newest model from OpenAI. Now they're skipping O2 because I believe that O2 has a branded name somewhere else and they wanted to keep it unique. So they're skipping O2 going right to O3, but it is the next progression in the O1 series. And they just released a video about this model. If you want to watch it yourself, it's called OpenAI O3 and O3 Mini, the 12 days of OpenAI day 12. You can find it here on YouTube. But in this video, I'm going to give you a quick summary just in case you don't want to watch the video for yourself and you just want the Coles notes. So let's get started. Okay, they're saying that their next frontier model is called O3. And it's important to note that they're not launching this model today. They're just announcing it. At the start of these 12 days, they did launch O1 Pro mode. So they already did their model launch. So they want to note that this new O3 model is not available for the public, but it is available now for public research testing. And you can apply to be a research tester on their website. The main capability of this new model appears to be its reasoning steps. So we know with O1 that it reasons through tough, complex problems. Well, O3 does that a lot better. And it also does that a lot longer. And because of these long reasoning times, the new model is really good at technical benchmarks. The first graph you see here is software engineering. And this is basically real world software tasks that the model is tested on. We see that O1 preview scored a 41.3% accuracy. O1 scored a 48.9% accuracy. And O3 is blowing those two out of the water at a 71.7% .7 accuracy. The second graph here is competition code. And the number you see here is an ELO score. For those of you that play chess, it's a similar ranking score. So the higher ELO, the better. O1 preview scored a 1258. O1 scored an 1891. And O3 scored a whopping 2727. For comparison, Mark here in the video, the man in the white shirt, his best ELO score was 2,500. So the O3 model outperformed that. The O3 model also excels at mathematics. This first graph here is competition math. We see that O1 preview scored a 56.7% accuracy. O1 scored an 83.3% accuracy and the new O3 model scored 96.7% accuracy. This pretty much means that the model gets one question wrong each time it takes the test. For comparison, that Mark guy in the video, he once scored a perfect score on this test. The next graph is PhD level science questions. O1 preview scored a 78.3% accuracy. O1 scored pretty similar, a 78% accuracy and O3 scored an 87.7% accuracy. In comparison, expert PhDs in their field of choice, they usually get around a 70% accuracy. So all of these models appear to beat that. Mark makes a great point that you're starting to see saturation for these tests. Saturation means that we're gonna need new tests to see how much better our frontier models are getting. Like once they all start getting perfect scores on these tests, What's next? And he says a few tests have emerged to handle these upcoming problems. This one is called Epic AI Frontier Math. And look how low these models are scoring on it. This is good. There's a lot of room for growth. These tests are known to have the most impossible questions. Questions that would take professional mathematicians hours or even days to solve we see that all current offerings out there perform at an average of 2% accuracy on this test. And we see that already O3 is performing 25.2% accuracy. So over 10 times better than any of the other models. Next, the president of ArcRise joins them to talk about a new test. I believe he said ArcRise was the company name. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. 
but Arc AGI, this test, hasn't been beaten in five years. And if you think about it, in the AI world, five years seems like an eternity. This test looks like the ones you see on an IQ test. And if you remember from a previous video on my YouTube channel, I did make the top model at the time. This was roughly a year ago now. I made it take a test like this and it performed terribly. I think it got a few questions right, like maybe five or six out of 40. But my hunch was it was because of chance. A lot of these questions were multiple choice, so the model had a one in six chance of getting it right. Even a broken clock is right twice per day. The owner of Arc AGI asked Sam to solve this test, and he correctly solves it. He says that a blue square is being put in the empty space. Here is the next test that they showcase. This one is solved by Mark. He says that you have to take the yellow squares, count the number of colored dots, and then create a border of that width. The point of this test is that each question they get is completely new. So the model is forced to learn new skills each time. It can't just go off previous memory to solve these types of problems. These are the results of that test. You can see the O1 series down here. O1 mini scored an 8%. O1 preview scored a 13%. These are the compute times for O1 preview. So the longer the compute time, the better it's scored. This one scored 32%. And he makes an announcement that for the first time ever, they have a brand new official score and it's calculated within the allowed compute time and the O3 series scored an 87.5%. They're saying that the longer that these models can run, so the longer the compute time, the better it seems to score. And this is a big milestone because human comparable scores are about 85%, which means that this new model when it is allowed to compute for longer, is performing as well as humans on this test. The next part of the video is about O3 Mini. So this guy worked on O1 Mini, which is the best coder for the cost. O3 Mini is basically the same idea. You're gonna get adaptive thinking time in the API now. So low, medium, and high. If you want the model to think longer for more complicated problems, you set the adaptive thinking time higher. If it's easier or medial tasks, you make it think shorter to save on costs. It appears as if costs are gonna be determined on compute time now instead of input and output tokens. So that's the vibe I'm getting. I'm not sure if that's correct. They're now going back to the old test to see how O3 Mini performs. You can see that it performs worse but it does perform better with longer thinking times. The key here to understand is the cost difference. Scoring this high on the competition code test for 10 to 30 times less the cost, it's gonna be acceptable for most use cases. The other graph is just cost efficiency, proving that original point. Now they wanna showcase running a test with O3 Mini. This test is done on O3 Mini High that is the highest thinking time. And the prompt that he pastes in says, write me a Python script which launches a server locally for an HTML file which has a big text box. When I enter text into that box and press submit, it should send that request for code to the OpenAI O3 Mini API with medium reasoning effort, then take that resulting code, save it to a temporary file on the desktop, then execute that file in a new Python terminal. So I know this is tough to read. It says a few more details. It can find my API key. Please add some extra prompting into the request to the API to specify that it should only return raw code without any formatting or markdown at all. And you'll be executing this on a Mac laptop. It takes about 40 seconds to compute this. He copies the code and pastes it to his server. Then he runs the Python script. He gets the server IP address and pastes it into his browser. And that gets him the HTML text box UI. So that part was successful. Now he runs a simple prompt. It says print open AI in a random number, hit submit. And when he opens up his terminal, you see the open AI 41 right there. 
Remember, a part of that HTML text box backend code, it's using its own API. In the next test, he uses the code he wrote with O3 Mini originally to run another test on itself with low reasoning effort on a GPGA dataset. From this prompt, it appears that they want it to create a new test of multiple choice questions, then take its own test, then grade itself on that test, and look how fast it's executing this task. It's blazingly quick, it takes five to 10 seconds to complete, and it returned its own results. It scored a 61.62% accuracy on its own test. You know, if I was creating my own test, I'd make myself score 100, but that's just me. Anyways, this is phenomenal. It's outstanding to see. Now they're showing that same competition math Amy test, and we can see the same results. The longer the compute time, the better it scores. And then we get insight into that PhD level science question test. And again, the longer the compute time, the better these models score. O3 Mini on high compute time is scoring almost as good as O1 and O1 Preview. If you want to apply as a security or safety researcher, they say you have until January 10th, 2025 to apply. You're gonna apply via a form on the OpenAI website. In the last part of the video, they talk about new safety guidelines, and that's using the model's own reasoning capabilities to see if it's a safe or unsafe prompt to begin with. They discuss that reasoning is actually a good tool to see the underlying meaning of a user's prompt to catch if it's acting in bad faith. They talk about this a bit and say that they plan to launch these new models in late January. So what do you guys think of this new model announcement? What excites you? What do you think is next? Let me know in the comments below. If you're looking for a comprehensive business suite of AI agents for your company that utilizes all of the new API tools that OpenAI releases, every time there's new features, I like to add it into this app, check out youraiagent.com. We have everything from auto blogging to blue sky bots to chat bots, LinkedIn bots, Reddit posters, social listening agents, Amazon affiliate agents, posting hourly or daily news, Tumblr, Twitter bots, and YouTube comment responders. I'll leave a link to a video playlist on my channel so you can learn more about this software. If you want to learn how to build your own AI agents and turn it into a profitable web app, maybe you want to utilize the OpenAI's API, check out my online course, How to Build a Custom AI App. I'll drop a link to this in the description as well. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there later.